God's word you may at this time. James chapter 1, verse number 19. Again, if reading the word correctly, the Bible would say, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And he beholdeth himself, and goeth away, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But who looketh uh, unto a perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. If any man among you seem to be righteous, and brideth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. Let us pray, Father. I do now pray and ask that you have your blessing on the reading of the word. God, that you just do what needs to be done. And our hearts and lives, we are grateful and thankful for this day that you've given us. For these things we do ask in thy name. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I would like to take a moment, if I can, this morning and bring to you the message that God's put in my heart out of this passage of Scripture entitled, Memorial Day, a day to look back. Tomorrow is the day that we look back and honor those who has killed while serving and fighting for our nation's liberty and freedom. We thank God for each and every one that has fought for this nation. We understand that better day will come, but today we think of those who lost their lives in the act of service. We forget not their sacrifices. We forget not their duty, and we forget not uh, their loyalty to this country. Our scripture this morning, just for a brief moment, to please understand what we're looking at, the Bible's talking about a man holding himself, his face to a glass, such as a mirror. And when he looks at it and he walks away, he forgetteth what he looked at. I'm so afraid that many a time we forget certain things. We forget those who gave up their lives for our country. We forget about those who died on the field. Some of them has been missing in action from day one. Some later on has been found. But many, many have been forgotten about because they never found their bodies. There's only a, a little white cross in a cemetery somewhere trying to keep people to remember. Folks, I'd say today we ought to never forget what they did for our country. We recognize and understand their love for the place that we call home. We understand their passion for all mankind to live freely. And we also understand their dedication to our flag and to the United States of America. I say this morning, we salute them with honor and promises that we will never forget them and what they did for our country. I thank God for the families who gave up sons, daughters, husbands, grandparents to go and serve for this country. Can I go on to say this morning that we ought to always take time to stop and think. The other day, well, I went up to the cemetery, some one of the cemeteries, and I walked around and was looking at the dates and looking at how long people have been in those graves. And I came across one that was a War One One veteran that had lost his life. I could not help but to sit, stand there and look down for just a moment. And then slowly, I raised my arm and I saluted this one. I've never been in the military, 
And you say, well, you shouldn't salute. Uh, I'm here to tell you we ought to salute them yeah. and raise a hand of honor and appreciate what they did for our country. I thank God for those who lost their lives so that we can stand here today and preach the word of God and have church and have service. Thank God for them. Today, our text encourages us to be doers of the word of God, just not hearers only. In other words, when we're thinking about Memorial Day and when we celebrate it tomorrow in our own way, some will be down on the lake, some will be on the golf course, some will be uh, out in the yard playing ball, some will be uh, somewhere doing something. Folks, we need to always stop and think about those who lost our, their lives for our souls uh, and for our sake. Uh, I say the Word of God tells us that we ought to be doers and not hearers only. For being hearers only will cause us to forget these things uh, and cause us to, uh, uh, to, uh, to do something that's not Christian-like. Uh, we said Wednesday night that many people feel that just because they're born in a country that is Christian, that that makes them Christian. Uh, folks, that don't make them Christian. Uh, we know accepting Christ makes them Christian. But still <laughs> yet, do the right thing. I say do the right thing and be a doer of what the Word of God teaches us to do. The Bible says uh, it's like looking into a mirror and then walking away and forgetting what we look like. Uh, we, we may seem religious, but de deceive our own hearts. Uh, our religion, our works become in vain when we don't follow the principles of the Word of God and we don't obey the Word and become doers of the Word of God and just hearers only. Uh, let, let us learn uh, not to forget what, uh, what saith the Scripture in the Bible. First of all, let me get to the text this morning. Uh, we say in verse number, uh, uh, verse number 19, uh, the Bible says, uh, My beloved uh, brethren, he says, Let every man be, well, number one, swift, uh, swift to hear. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a hearer as long as we become a doer. But the Bible says to be swift to hear. Uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need to understand what he's saying. That we, we need to learn to act upon what we hear, meaning that there comes a time that in our lives that we allow the preaching of God's Word, we allow the message that comes from God's Word uh, to prick our hearts and to stir our hearts uh, and to cause our souls to move uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we just don't want to sit around like an old sponge uh, and soak up what the what Bible gives us Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Sunday school after Sunday school, and every time that we get around hearing the gospel being sung <laughs> or preached somewhere, that we just take it in and take it in. Uh, folks, eventually it becomes stale. Uh, and you know what happens when something becomes stale? It begins to rot. Uh, it becomes to become foul. Uh, that's why the scripture says that we need to put apart the filthiness. Uh, uh, put away the filthiness. Uh, uh, put away uh, the naughtiness. Us, uh, put away the things that which would cause our lives to be soured uh, to where it would not be desirable unto man. The preaching ought to be ought to move our souls uh, to action. I truly, truly believe that. Uh, whether it be me doing the preaching or someone else preaching, uh, whether someone's sharing the gospel, whether it be just sharing a Bible verse, uh, whether it be someone teaching the Bible verses, uh, uh, it ought to stir and move our souls uh, and cause us to act upon the precious Word of God. Uh, that's when we become a doer of the Word of God. Now, as a preacher, please let me uh, help you to understand uh, that we sometimes uh, uh, wonder if anybody's ever listening. Uh, uh, we understand that we are to preach the Word of God uh, and let the Spirit do the moving. Uh, and I truly believe that. Uh, but my soul, even Elijah, seeing the dry bones uh, begin to move when he prophesied under them. Say amen right there. I mean, listen, uh, well, we as preachers, uh, we understand the scripture. We understand how it works. Uh, but yet sometimes uh, we look and we wonder, is anybody out there? Is anybody listening to what we have to say? Uh, I believe that God gives the man of God 
the word of God to preach. I mean, this just don't something that we sit around and try to come up on our own. It's what God puts in our hearts. So therefore, if God puts it in our hearts, it's meant for the hearer to listen and then become a doer and act and move upon that. I'm not trying to get you to get in the altar this morning. I'm just trying to stir your heart and stir your soul. I'm trying to stir your emotions. Not drop, We're trying to use some kind of scare tactic. I've seen preachers in the time past that they would use some kind of scare tactic to get people in the altar, to get them saved. Folks, I don't believe that's true salvation. I remember as a young boy when they came out with that movie called The Burning Hell. And folks, I tell you, they used to get all the young people together at the churches and they would gather them up in the barns and they would put this movie on and that we would sit and watch that movie and we'd watch people dropping off into hell and, and it would scare young people to death and then they'd get up right quick and give an altar call. Man, the young people would get in the altar and they would start begging God, please don't let me go to hell and they'd get up and say, oh, we had so many saved today. Folks, I'm saying today, I believe the preaching of God's word, the truth of God's word ought to stir the heart and the soul to make one move to get saved of being drawn by the Holy Spirit of God. And I believe the true Christian that has been saved, that it ought to prick their heart and help them to know that there's something they need to do for God and move them to tears, move them to repentance and seek God's will. Amen. I say today that we ought to be. Number two, the Bible says slow to speak and slow to wrath. Now listen, I heard one preacher say one time that that had to be his church. He said they're slow at everything that they do. He said, I can't get them to move. I can't get them to do anything. And whenever we do, it's just like they're like a bunch of, uh, what's that little animal, that uh, sloth or whatever, I can't hardly move. I, I, you know, he said, that has to be my church. And, and then I heard another preacher say one time, that he knows his church is going to be the first to go during the rapture. And we asked him, said, how do you know that? He said, because the Bible said that dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, and folks, I tell you, that might be funny things, uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, uh, the Bible says to be slow to speak uh, and slow to wrath. Uh, uh, the, the more, uh, the, the, to be more serious, we need to understand wrath uh, and, and that slow speaking uh, worketh not righteousness of God. Uh, if we understand the urgency that we are living in in this day and time, that the devil is on attack. The devil is trying to get our young people. The devil is trying to bust up our homes. The devil is attacking our young married couples. The devil is attacking our church. Folks, if we slow in our wrath, slow in our uh, slow in things, the devil will take over. The devil will win this battle. I don't know about you. I don't want him to win. I want to. I want to uh, win this thing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we have to. Uh, we, we are losing this battle sometimes, but I believe if we come together like they did in the book of Acts that Gary's teaching, in one mind and one accord, uh, then we can see some great and mighty things happen. Uh, listen, I've not lost my passion. Uh, I've not lost my concerns. Uh, I've not lost uh, my ideas uh, for the church. Uh, I want to do everything I can and try to help the church uh, to move uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ, to grow uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Oh, listen to me. I believe that we need to do number three, uh, and that is to stay, uh, to, to, to lay apart, uh, to lay aside uh, the filthiness uh, and the naughtiness uh, that may hinder us uh, from growing from God, uh, may hinder us uh, from learning from the Lord, may hinder us from being a doer uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I say something? Uh, anything that we do, uh, whether it becomes a trustee of the church, as we've been talking about, uh, whether it's to be a Sunday school teacher or even a Bible school helper or a Bible school teacher, uh, that we do it uh, not for man, uh, not for ourselves, but we do it for God. Uh, we do it uh, as a doer of the Word of God. Uh, and we do it to please uh, and honor and glorify Him. Uh, we need to put away whatever it might be that's keeping us uh, from serving the Lord. Uh, oh, I've heard people say before, uh, preacher, I would get involved uh, or I would do this. Uh, but so and so 
Listen, you're not doing it for so and so. You're not even doing it for yourself. You're doing it for God. I like what someone said. I have to give account for myself. I got to stand for myself. And I got to be judged for myself, not nobody else. Or what anybody else is doing. Uh, can I say this morning uh, that we uh, as a church uh, ought to become a doer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, lay apart those things uh, and, and receive the grafted uh, word of God. I believe uh, this morning if we are truly, uh, truly want to be a doer of the word of God. And we truly want to be obedient to God. Uh, I believe that whenever we hear that engrafted word. Uh, I'm talking about that word that's being seated in our hearts. Uh, that's being put into our lives uh, that we ourselves uh, would act upon it uh, that we ourselves would move upon it uh, because we would receive it uh, and once we receive it uh, it's like a seed that would sprout up in your soul uh, and that would want to burst out uh, and show up on the outside uh, and, and do something and be something for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I noticed uh, as I was driving up and down the road, uh, many people have got their gardens planted uh, and got them plowed. Uh, and they, I could see the signs uh, of new life. Uh, as I seen potatoes, uh, heads are popping up out of the ground. Uh, I see tomato plants uh, in their cages. I see I see onions and lettuce uh, uh, and, and, and the cabbage uh, that's are coming up out of the ground. Uh, and no doubt that for long, there'll be some cucumbers and some squash uh, and all that other good stuff are popping up out of the ground uh, but you know something listen uh, uh, that, that seed that was put in the ground uh, it was watered it was fertilized uh, it was engrafted uh, and then and, and it couldn't just sit there any longer it had to burst out and say world uh, here I am listen there's not, nothing wrong with saying God uh, here I am Use me. Let me be a doer of thy word. Wherever thou send me, I will go. Whatever you want me to do, I'll try to do. If there's something you want me to do, I'll, I'll go do it. Or if you somebody you want me to go see, I'll go see them. If you want me to sing, I'll sing. If you want me to testify, I'll testify. If you want me to shout, I'll shout. Hallelujah. Just be a doer of the word of God and not a hearer. <laughs> Only can I go on to say that we need uh, number four, we need to become that doer of the Word of God. First Corinthians 13 and verse number 11 says, uh, When I was a child, now listen, uh, I speak as a child, uh, I understood as a child, uh, I thought as a child, uh, but when I became a man, uh, I put away uh, uh, childish things. Uh, for us, uh, it, we ought to read it like this uh, When I was a sinner, uh, I spake as a sinner. I understood as a sinner. I thought of us as a sinner. But when I became a Christian, uh, I put away a uh, sinner things. Uh, folks, that's the way we ought to be uh, come in our lives. Uh, we ought to be a doer of the word and say it's time that I put aside those things uh, that the world did uh, and I did in the world uh, and the sin of my life and I need to put forth my Christian steps uh, and become a Christian uh, and be a Christian uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse number 12 says, for we see through the, a glass darkly all oh, listen to me. I wonder, I wonder how many of our mirrors has gotten stained up. How many of them turned black uh, and we can't even see a true image anymore? Uh, I've got a mirror that I got from my mother after she had passed away. Uh, I've got it put in a closet uh, at, uh, where, I, uh, where I go into. Uh, and then I don't go in there to look for my mama. But that mirror's in there. Uh, and it's got the little designs on it that she had that she loved. She loved hummingbirds. It's got hummingbirds on it. Uh, but I've noticed over the years, uh, over the past 18 years, uh, that mirror has become that begin to get faded. Uh, it's begin to have some places on it. Uh, it's not a clear picture anymore of when I look into it. Uh, uh, folks, I tell you, I wonder how many of our spiritual mirrors in this world uh, uh, that we're living in has become darkly uh, uh, because of sin that's in our lives, uh, because of things that's taking place. Uh, and we no longer can see the true image that we ought to see. And we've forgotten where we were and what we were before we were saved. We forgot forgotten what God has done for us and all that God does. Uh, oh, sometimes uh, we need to take out the spiritual cloth uh, and just wipe that thing down and clean it up real good and bring the life back to it so we can see uh, where we are with God. Amen. We shall 
be blessed according to the scripture. Listen now, the Bible says uh, that he, he said, whoso uh, looketh unto a per the, the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. In other words, he who becomes a doer of the word and does what he's supposed to, remembers what he needs to remember. He says, and he bring a bet then, uh, being not uh, a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Uh, this man shall be blessed uh, in his deeds. Uh, oh, listen to me. I believe the scripture is trying to get us to understand this morning that if we uh, will do what we're supposed to do, uh, and if we would not forget these things, uh, if we would keep in mind the things of God, uh, the things that are around us, uh, just as we need to keep remembering uh, those who died for this country, if we become a doer, uh, the Bible said that we shall be blessed. Uh, not only blessed, uh, but blessed in our deeds. Uh, in other words, God's going to bless uh, the efforts in which we put forth uh, to try to do something for him. Uh, God's one day going to look down. He's going to breathe upon it. Uh, and he's going to say, well done. And because of what you've done, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your deeds. Uh, I'm going to bless your works if you want to use that word. Uh, he said, I'm going to bless it. Uh, amen. Uh, all that God will have his blessings uh, upon this church. Amen. Uh, have his blessings uh, upon our deeds, uh, upon our works and what we do for him. Uh, listen, folks, uh, I understand sometimes uh, you can get it can get very discouraging. Uh, you say, well, preacher, I have tried and tried and tried to invite people to church. Uh, I have tried and tried to get my family to come to church. Uh, I have tried and tried to do things with the church. Uh, I come out with all the events uh, and get involved. Uh, but it seems like it never helps. Uh, it seems like it never changes. Listen, I believe uh, that God uh, will look at the work uh, and see that we're doers. Uh, and God will bless in some way like you'll never know. Oh, sometimes you might not see it uh, on a number that goes on a board. Amen. But you'll see it in the heart and the soul of a life. Uh, it wasn't too long ago. Listen now, I'm not taking credit because I had nothing to do with it. But I knew of a young couple that was going through a struggling time. Man, they seemed like they were faced with a situation. Uh, but you know what? Through the prayers of the church, uh, I've seen that family come back together and God bless that family. Uh, folks, I'm here to tell you that God can do it. Uh, you say, well, he didn't do it for my family or he didn't do it for this one or that one. Uh, listen, uh, God chooses who he chooses. Uh, as we said Wednesday night, uh, God makes the choice. Amen. Uh, we just need to accept God's choices uh, and understand God's in control. Uh, I'm here to take it this morning that God's going to take care of things. we got to keep the faith Amen. and stay doers of the word of God. Listen, he shall be blessed if he continues being that doer. He shall be blessed if he uh, be not a forgetful hearer. Oh, I wonder how many times we leave the church on Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday night after hearing the gospel being preached or taught uh, we leave on Sunday after Sunday school or sometime during that day and we forget those things in which we had heard. Those precious words that came from God's word. The message that God put in the heart. We go out and get our vehicles. We go down the road and go home. We get busy about our own business and we forget everything that God has tried to touch our hearts with. Oh, that we would just continue and be not forgetful hearers. God said ye shall be blessed. I don't know about you, but I want a blessing. I want a blessing in my life. I'll never forget. Uh, some of you men remember last year when we had our men's meeting, our men's banquet, uh, and, and, and the a dear brother that came with us, uh, uh, came and spoke to us, uh, and he, he was here right now. My mind went blank, folks. Uh, thank you, bro Brother Rick Jackson. Forgot his name. Hey, I'm human, amen. Hey, listen, uh, uh, but Brother Rick Jackson, he came and spoke to our men. What a blessing he spoke on that day as he was giving us some word analogy and was talking about being fishers of men. Uh, uh, and, you know, that was nearly a year ago. I still remember it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I could, I'll never forget, he had preached a message one time. Uh, and my wife heard the message that he preached. Uh, and every time that she seen him, I don't care how many years uh, it went by, I forget the whole thing about the message. 
But the point that he, in that message that he had made uh, is that we say we're fine. Uh, and, and when we ought to say we're not fine because of our simple conditions and things in our lives. And every time my wife sees, he'll look at her and he'll say, how you doing, sister? And she said, I'm doing terrible. And if the, he'll stop and look at her like, what? And then it hits him. This message he preached, folks, was probably seven or eight years ago. I'm saying, don't be a forgetful hearer of what God pricks your heart with. Uh, he's trying to help you. He's trying to change your life. He's trying to make a difference in your life. Oh, he shall be blessed if we become pure in our religion and, uh, not, uh, and, and, and undefiled before God or undefiled before God. In other words, we need to keep our religion. Uh, and folks, it's about the only <laughs> time you ever hear religion in the Bible, but we need to keep our religion uh, Pure, amen, uh, so that when the world looks and sees it, uh, they'll say it's good, uh, amen. Uh, I was saying the other day about how easy it is to ruin a testimony and how a church can ruin a testimony. And no matter what happens thereafter, sometimes it's hard to get over those bad testimonies. Can I say something? Uh, if you do what the Word of God tells you and be a doer of the Word and become a not uh, become a, uh, a, 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 for, a not a forgetful hearer, uh, uh, but uh, keep your religion pure, folks, it will eventually override that bad testimony, and man will see a difference. Uh, and not only man, but God will see a difference, uh, and God will bless it. Uh, let me go on to say, He, we shall be blessed uh, if we visit the fatherless uh, and the widows uh, in their affliction. Uh, oh, it's just like as we were saying at the beginning of the message, uh, talking about those uh, men and women uh, that lost their lives in battle for this country. How so many people forget them. Uh, I think about those widows uh, and those fatherless uh, uh, that they get pushed aside sometimes. They get forgot about. Uh, and, and people don't think about them. Uh, there they are uh, in the, up in their ages uh, sitting at home all alone. Uh, sitting in a nursing home all by themselves. Uh, and nobody never goes by to visit them. Nobody picks up the phone and calls them. The Bible's saying uh, we must no different uh, when we do that to our veterans. Amen. Uh, we need to remember them. Uh, we need to remember our elder. We need to remember the widows uh, and the fatherless uh, and let them know that we still love them. Amen. You never understand that until you get put into a position and you talk to someone that's in that position and they talk about how lonely they are. Do you understand that loneliness uh, is one of the world's uh, greatest uh, death killers. It kills the spirit. It kills the soul. It kills the, the emotions. It kills the person because they are lonely inside. Oh, that we don't forget them. Just sometimes a simple phone call will make a difference. I remember my grandmother when she was on up in her years and she used to come and she used to tell me, she said, well, I sat here all day. Nobody called. Nobody came by to see me. I said, my mom, I said, have you ever thought about as old as you are? All your friends and loved ones done gone on. You're the only one left. There's no one left to come to see you or call you. And then I always told her, I said, why don't you pick up the phone and call someone else? It works both ways. Somehow we forget those things. I said, pick the phone up and call somebody. I said, you never call me. I said, but I, said I told her one day, I said, man, well, you hurt my feelings because you never called me. And she said, well, son, it's not my responsibility to call you. She said, I'm your grandmother. You call me. <laughs> so I tried to call her as much as possible, as often as possible. And listen, you know how it is. They get older. I'd call her in the morning. I'd call her in the afternoon. She said, well, you ain't called me. Because she took a nap somewhere and she thought it was another tone of the day. I said, Mama, I called you this morning to talk to you. Oh, you did? I don't remember it. So you just have to repeat it. Hey, listen. I'm just saying out of love, we don't forget. God said, I'll bless you. You want a blessing today? You want a blessing today? Hey, listen, you want a real good blessing? Why don't you cook, why don't you cook Miss uh, 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 Helen a meal and take it and give it to her? Keep her from having to cook. I'm trying to help you out, sister. <laughs> See, give me an amen right there. I'm just saying be a blessing if you want a blessing. Amen. Then I'm, let, me, so let me say this last of all. We shall be blessed if we keep ourselves unspotted from the world. The Bible said in verse 27, let us visit. Let us visit them. And it said, and keep himself unspotted from the world. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be blessed. I need to remember 
Those things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. I don't need to do them anymore. I don't need to get involved in that anymore. And I tell you, I don't even need to go where I used to go anymore. Why? Because I don't need to get spotted. Heard one say on a testimony that they were influenced by friends to do certain things in their lives. Listen, folks, I wonder, I wonder, we talk about peer pressure. And we talk about teenagers having peer pressure. I wonder how many adults are under the same kind of peer pressure. We get pressure to do something. Go somewhere. Act a certain way. Simply because everybody else is. Listen, folks, it don't bother me. Everybody on the job site knows I'm a preacher. It don't bother me one bit to let, that they know that. Hey, listen, it don't bother me one bit when I show up on Monday and they, someone will say, hey, what did you preach on yesterday? Hey, son, I'll re-preach it again if I have to. I'll have a captive audience up. I'll get them when they're on the roof, putting the roof on. And I say, man, you can't come down. I'm going to preach to you. Hey, I don't bother, it don't bother me one bit. And what I'm saying is, be unspotted from the world. Be different. We said not was talking about being that peculiar people again. We was talking about being that holy priesthood. We was talking about being that, that uh, chosen generation. Listen, there's nothing wrong with that. We can do that this morning. We can do all we can to be a doer of the word of God and forget not. Let us pray. This morning, Father, I bow before you. I ask, oh God, that you take the scripture. Lord, you take this message. You touch our hearts. You do what needs to be done. I pray, Father God, that thy will will be done. That we, If anybody here needs to make a decision for you, today will be the day that they make that decision. I pray, God, thy will be done. As we extend our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed, Miss Tammy, if you'll come to the end uh, for just a few moments. We will give you an opportunity this morning if you need to come and pray and seek God's will. Just to do what needs to be done in your heart and life. If God's touched you in some way, when she begins to play, why don't you just slip out and come to this altar? Get down and pray and seek God's will for whatever need might need. I know God can do great and mighty things in your life, in your family, and in our church. The church, we've got to become a doer, not a hearer. We need to not forget, but remember and do what's right. You need to come. Why don't you come? We shall not tarry long, but give you this opportunity. Will you obey God? Will you obey the Spirit? what needs to be done. Help us. and uh, we're just looking to have a, a blessing in the Lord. Amen. Uh, so uh, we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Philip, would you give us honor and dismiss us? Sir? Father, once again, we thank you for this and other privilege, Father, that you've given us.